Well, hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for joining me. So I've got a bit of a mystery item today. It's a personal stereo, obviously, but I don't know what brand it is actually. They come up on eBay now and again in uh, various states. And I got this one just for a bit of fun, really, just to see what it was, find out a bit more about it, see, see what it's like. So um, if you do know what it is, let me know in the comments, because I'm not actually sure what brand it is, to be honest. Some sort of generic thing, I would imagine. What we do know is it's a three volt DC, and I'm just trying to have a look there. It's a positive tip on the adapter. It's basically just got a volume potentiometer just there. One headphone out. And according to this, it plays and fast forwards. Just the three transport controls there. And they've really made a bit of a song and dance about it. High resolution, lots of dots and arrows, implying that it could be like, you know, auto reverse or something like that. And actually, in fact, it's uh, it doesn't even rewind. So that's uh, good fun. Anyways, I've just had this come in, so we can take a look at it now. We'll give it a clean, give it a service, see if the belt's any good, all that kind of stuff, clean the heads. And um, yeah, just see what we've got really. But first things first, we're just gonna take a quick look and see whether or not it even works. So to that end, I've got my trusty little JSX37 Sanyo personal stereo speakers here from the 1980s. And we'll just, uh, let's have a look, volume minimum that way. Headphones in, just see if it actually turns first. Uh, I've had a cursory look just in there and I can see the head is pretty clean. I don't know if you can see that through there. So it's not gonna cause us too much problems by putting a tape in. And sure enough, no, I was gonna say sure enough, it's working. You can hear it. But obviously the belt is not attached. It's obviously degraded or slipped off or something like that. So we can't go any further anyway. And to be honest, it feels quite grimy and sticky and horrible. So we'll um, we'll do all the uh, do all the work on it now. Get it up and running. So the first thing I think is get this back off and see what sort of state we've got. So we'll just get these screws out might just be the two quite a long screw there let's go all the way through you've got the molded in belt clip there i don't know if that's where the motor goes there's a slightly raised area i wondered if there was a screw underneath the serial number there but no the back cover just comes off like so okay here we go then. Wow. <laughs> well, first thing, well, okay. First thing I noticed is, wow, look at that. So that's how the uh, transport buttons are actually placed on. They are literally just given a hot stab and melted into place. Wow, that's classy. Um, oh, and there's the mech. Wow. All right, well, I'm not quite sure. The last time I actually had a mechanism on any or any cassette t tape where literally the mech is in your hands after undoing two screws. That's quite something. Um, but anyway, there we go. So it actually looks fairly, fairly clean and tidy in here, to be honest. The potentiometer looks okay. We could have actually tested that just now. In fact, we can potentially, might be able to hear some hissing from it. So let's just put this, let's just see. Let's play again. Yeah, can you hear the, if you listen to that humming? And down. We've got humming because I've got a fluorescent light on at the moment if I turn it off. So that's where that's coming from, but that's actually quite useful because you can hear the, uh, you can actually hear the volume going up and down. But interestingly though, you can also see the belt going around now. So what's happening there, look, is the belt's turning. So we know the motor's not seized, we could hear that anyways. So press play again and you'll see the motor. And that is turning. But interestingly enough, what's not happening, oh, there you go, now there goes the belt. Okay, the slightest touch and it's off. Typical sort of teardrop shape where that's deformed, where it's been in position. 
But what I was about to say is that is that that belt down here is not doing anything at all. There's another belt there that's not turning that pulley. Can you see that pulley just there? And that should turn. And that's obviously the take up reel. Actually, it's yeah, you've got a molded reel there and that's the one that moves. And I think what's happening is this one here is just not man enough to drive. It's just slipping and not turning that pulley there. It'll turn that way because this one's a lot lighter, but it just won't turn the other way. So I think all we're just gonna have to do is remove this belt, replace that one. It's only cheap and cheerful, this one. So we're just gonna, just gonna whip the belts off. There's no need to clean too much inside any of these. It's pretty clean and tidy. So I'm just gonna get a couple of, couple of belts and I'll be back in a second. But first, I'm just gonna get these batteries and everything else out of the way. And that'll be that. Actually, I say that'll be that. Just out of interest. Just going to remove these two screws as well. You know what we're like on this channel. We like to have a quick poke around and see what's inside if we can. Now, yeah, it's pretty. It's held in by the battery contact on one side. So, there we go. Wow, why buy a bag of transistors when you can buy this personal stereo? Look at that. I thought it was a spider nest in there. What have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's like an old little pocket radio. So there's your, there's your input jack there for your DC, or your AC to DC converter. There's your headphone jack. Probably the voltage regulator chip just down there and that's the little just inside there is your potentiometer for your motor speed adjustment which you can probably get to from the back let me just see yep there's a tiny hole very tiny hole just in the back case which lines through there and actually adjusts the variable resistor for the motor speed so that's how you can adjust that if you wanted to but basically yeah look at that there's a few resistors in there uh, half a dozen caps, no, probably 10 caps, but loads of resist uh, transistors. There we go. So yeah, proper old school. Huh. Cheap and cheerful. And that mechanism, wow, that is a work of art right there. A couple of screws and a few plastic pieces. No expenses spent. <laughs> or should I say all expenses spared? One of the two. Uh, anyways, well, let's, let's get rid of that little shop of horror, shall we? Put this back in. And then we'll get some belts on it. And there we go. So there's the other one. Yeah. So a couple of elliptical belts. I'm going to go and find myself a couple of replacements and I shall be back momentarily. So I think I've found belts that should do the job now. So I'm just going to drop one around here. And I'm hopeful, just make sure there's no twists in it. Nice, is that going to turn that one now? Yep, seems to have a bit more, a bit more friction now, that one. I think it's okay. I'm just hesitating, so I just want to check. But we can always, uh, we can always come back and do that in a minute. It's quite hard to tell sometimes. You don't want to make them too tight and make, put too much weight or pressure on the motor or drag it or anything like that. But by the same token, you also want to make sure that you've got, you've got enough bite as well. So now anyway, let's just see what happens if we... Put these batteries back in and press play. Yeah, we're turning now. Look, it should be all right. Tiny bit of a wobble on that belt. These are only cheap belts I'm just putting in because, quite frankly, this is just a bit of a quick show and tell just so you can see what's inside it. But what I will do, however, is put a tape in nonetheless and let's just see. Yeah, we're not going to ruin anything by uh, by putting the tape in there now. It's not that dirty. We'll clean the heads and stuff in a minute. 
Oops, the daisy straight. That was my fault. I uh, forgot the back wasn't on and stuck my finger on the belt and took it straight off. So let's try that again, shall we? Here we go. Yep. Yep, that's not too bad. And fast forward, you can see that spinning round. And stop play. And fast forward again. Yeah. You can hear that. And it's cutting me into my finger. Um, whereas if the belt was loose, what you'd find is as soon as you put any pressure anywhere near the, the pulleys or the spindles, they will just stop because there's no resistance. But when when the drive of the belt is enough to actually start pushing against your finger, you know you, you're you okay there. Um, so that's, that's gonna be all right, I think. So what we'll just do now is very quickly just do our usual head cleaning exercise and uh, I think we'll go from there. So just as usual, the head's clean on this anyway, but we'll do the capstan. Again, that's clean. Not much on the pinch roller either, to be honest. Maybe nobody enjoyed it long enough to listen to much tapes on this. Do you know what? I'm not going to spend all day on that. It was just a, just a cheap and cheerful. But you can see how simple that mechanism is. There you go. Nothing to it. And I am just going to put a couple of slightly fresher batteries in. I could hook up three volts DC actually straight to the straight to the contacts to help, but um, it's not really worth it on this. Let's have a look. Press play and headphones in. Oops, a daisy. Always the danger with without the uh, there you go. Without the back plate on, quite often the springs can. Springs can't line up properly, so let's just try that again. And okay, yep, it's turning quite strongly, so I'm just gonna put the tape back in. We're going to turn that up slightly, just tweak it. There we go. That's fine by me. Good stuff. Right, so all that remains is to uh, get this back together again. And that will be that. As much as I mocked this, it's actually not such a silly idea because quite often you, when you're taking a personal stereo apart, you've got to hook it around or over a headphone jack or you're pulling away at the volume potentiometer or something. And actually this is quite a clamshell thing, isn't a bad shout because you can just line things up and drop them in. So, you know, kudos to them for that, I suppose. You know, again, if it's a decent restoration, what you would do is you'd literally wash all this out, maybe put some cutting compound on, polish it all and all that kind of malarkey. But, Again, this was just for a bit of a poke around in there and just to see if it worked really. But we've already, in these few short minutes, had a, had a bit of a look, a bit of a show and tell, got it working. 
trains both of the belts, clean the head cap stand, pinch roller, and got it back together again. So I will just give it a quick wipe over and then I'll just change the speakers for some slightly larger personal stereo speakers and we'll have a quick listen. And then uh, that'll be that. So here it is then, the personal stereo that don't speak its own name. I still don't quite know what it is or where it's from or who makes it. If you know, please do let me know in the comments and enlighten me. I've seen a few of these around on eBay, sometimes on their own or occasionally as part of a job discarded lot somewhere. So I thought I'd pick one up just to have a poke around inside, see what it's about and share it with you guys. So I hope you uh, enjoyed having a look around with me in this one. Dead easy to work on. At the time, there wasn't that much wrong with it, to be honest. It just didn't have any drive, did it? And it was sticky and grimy. So we've given it a bit of a hygienic clean and a polish. We've also changed both of the belts because one was slipping and they were both tear dropped and warbly anyway. So that was easy enough to do. And we've also just checked over the volume parts. We've cleaned the head, the capstan, the pinch roller, adjusted the tape speed. Again, dead easy on this one two little screws holding the whole thing together and then the mech just comes out so that was quite cool i've got to be honest the actual build quality leaves a bit to be desired and it's not exactly high in uh, in functions either but nonetheless it is what it is so let's have a little listen through uh, again the trusty jsx 37 speakers from sanyo which we've got just here they are obviously tiddy little things they're only 0.2 watts but let's have a little listen And if we fast forward it, that works. And play. And just check the volume control. And again, that's okay. And check the headphone connections. And that's solid and no problems with that. So that's all good. So anyway, there we go. That's what's inside this little beastie. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Please do subscribe and hit the notifications bell for updates because we've got a whole bunch of 8-tracks, personal stereos, boomboxes, arcade games, all that kind of stuff. So do please uh, stay along for the ride. It's quite good fun here sometimes. And um, thanks very much for watching. So stay safe, take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye for now.